Hello everyone, welcome to Make a Link. Before starting this lecture, I would like to inform you that this lecture is a demo version of our full course. You can access the full course at our website makealink.com with many other features like quizzes after every lecture, e-notes and discussion forum to discuss the doubt you may have. All the courses are provided at an unbelievable starting price of rupee 1 per day that is rupee 365 per year. Further, we go by the name make a link on Facebook and YouTube so you can reach us there too for any query. Now let's move on to the lecture. Today we are going to start a very important lecture on analysis of W reinforced beam. In previous lecture I have explained you analysis and design of singly reinforced beam with an example. In case you have not gone through the previous lecture I would highly recommend you Watch this lecture first as it might be a little difficult to understand the analysis and design without the clear understanding of basics. In this lecture, we will be primarily studying why we use doubly reinforced beam and then some basics related to doubly reinforced beam where we will derive the governing equation of analysis of this beam along with some assumption and then as we always do an example on analysis. So let's begin with why we use doubly reinforced beam. As we know concrete has very good compressive strength and almost negligible tensile strength compared to its compressive strength. And that's why we use steel reinforcement on tensile side of concrete. Even reinforcements in singly reinforced beam on tensile face are good both in compression and tension. But these beam have their respective limiting moment of resistance with their specified width their fixed depth and the grade of concrete and steel we use for design purpose. These all are the limitation of singly reinforced beam. Now a problem may arise if singly reinforced beam is subjected to bending moment that is greater than limiting moment of resistance. So to solve the problem we have to increase the moment carrying capacity of beam. So there are two ways to increase the moment carrying capacity of beam. Either we may increase the depth of beam or we may provide a steel reinforcement in compression side. Generally the latter is preferred. You might be wondering why that is so. I mean why to provide compression reinforcement for enhancing the moment carrying capacity of a beam while we can always do this by increasing the depth of beam. So the answer for this question is that. It is not always possible to increase the depth of beam due to architectural consideration, headroom restrictions and increased depth adds more weight to self weight of beam compared to the weight of compression reinforcement. So these all are the reasons that we cannot increase the depth of beam. Above all the most important reason for providing steel reinforcement in compression side is that it provides safety against reversal of stresses in a structure. And you will be wondering that what is this reversal of stresses? Firstly, reversal stresses induced due to wind, seismic force, temperature stresses and many other reasons. So let me explain you. This is the singly reinforced beam and if the force applied on a beam in downward direction then upper section of beam will be in compression and the lower will be in tension and we know concrete is weak in tension that's why we provide steel in tension zone. On the other hand if force is applied from downward then beam will bend like this. Here situation is opposite to previous case. Upper section is in tension and lower is in compression. So here the stresses that induce are known as reversal stresses and that's why we use compression reinforcement in upper side to provide safety against reversal of stresses. Now let me tell you one more important point related to compression reinforcement that is the difference between hanger bars and compression reinforcement. As I introduced you with hanger bars in the last lecture that hanger bars are of nominal diameter provided in the compression zone of a beam for holding the shear stirrup. Hanger bars are not generally considered as compression reinforcement. But in some cases where the area of hanger bars is significantly greater than 0.2% of gross area. 
then the hanger bars are treated as compression reinforcement so here i have explained you that why we use doubly reinforced beam and the difference between hanger bars and compression bars now move to next part where we will learn some basics of doubly reinforced beam so let's start with assumptions of doubly reinforced beam the assumptions of singly reinforced beam that we studied in previous lecture are also applicable here you can revise this assumption from previous lecture but provision of compression reinforcement ensure that the failure mode will be ductile and hence the limitation of xu upon d ratio need not to be strictly followed here as we use in analysis and design of singly reinforced beam the stress strain relationship of a steel compression is the same as that in tension so the yield stress of a steel in compression will be 0.87 fy an important point here is that in most of the cases when fe250 steel is provided in compression reinforcement then it will attain its design yield point 0.87 fy but in case where fe415 steel and fe500 steel i mean hyhd bar we use it is not possible to attain the design yield point do you understand what will happen here if steel does not attain its design yield strength 0.87 fy it simply means in such cases stresses in tension and compression depends on neutral axis depth xu and bigger problem here is that the neutral axis depth xu is unknown and yet to be determined and you are thinking now that we got stuck here so how to solve this problem and there are only one way to solve such cases that is the trial and error method considering the strain compatibility and you don't have to worry about that i will show you with an example how to solve these types of problem until then just relax sorry guys for the interruption but as we told you earlier this is a demo lecture to see this complete lecture visit our website thank you